Hi everybody, uh, welcome to Chateau de la Griffre. Griffre. We're trying to work on our pronunciation because guys are trash talking us online. <laughs> Rightfully, we're English speakers. I mean, we're like Canadian English speakers. So, you know, the R is hard, but we're getting there. Um, people always come up to us. Episode 17, it's not all roses. Uh, people always come up to us, or at least often online, and say stuff like, can you believe that you live here? Like, do you ever walk up to this place or drive up to this place and just kind of pinch yourself? Yes. Yes. I'm driving home from the grocery store, and the chateau's a little ways from the highway, so there's like a bunch of fields in front. And I look over, and I, I think I more than once laughed out loud and went, this is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> like, it's insane. Like, how is this even possible? Because it just looks so surreal in the distance, and you're like... What is that? Every time, every single time I walk up to it, I feel that way. I feel like we have no business in such a beautiful house. I sometimes wonder if the original owners would uh, roll over in their grave or be a little disgusted that a teacher, uh, a, uh, a former youth pastor, an interior <laughs> decorator makes a little more sense, but that they would own his house. Uh, I wonder if he's disgusted. We are actually the simplest folk uh, from a place called Saskatchewan. I'm born in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. We're I was born in Regina. And these, this is not, this is not, um, I mean, this is kind of like uh, the middle of Canada, pretty flat, lots of farms, really nice people, um, not a lot of great buildings. No, no you just don't see this kind of thing. No noble blood. No, uh, Like no. they were, they were to have been yeah. noblemen and this was, that is not us. So this is, it's incredible for us that we've found a place like this. And, and in a lot of ways, it is kind of a fairy tale. Um, you know, there's a lot of aspects that are fun and it's not just the building, like France. Um, the food in France, some of the meals we've had. It's fantastic. You were, you know, Leslie was a fan of French food from day one. Mm -hmm. yeah, How you, can you not be? Yeah, I mean, that took me a bit to come <laughs> over, but the, the creativity and the, the you it's know. It's beautiful, they play yeah. it beautifully, whether yeah. it's simple food or super fancy food. Yeah, here's, you're looking at some of the meals we've had and the desserts are incredible. The idea of a formula meal is genius. Yeah, have you guys heard of that? A formula meal uh, is usually in three parts. Uh, either it's appetizer and plat or main main dish uh, and dessert. So either you can have all three for one flat price or you can have appetizer and main dish or main dish and dessert. Yeah, that's what I do. entree, plat, Rob and dessert. Rob usually gets um, so, yeah. appetizer and entree main and dish plat. and I do the other so then we can kind of snack on yeah, switch. And now what they do, the restaurants are genius. They only, instead of doing 17 things, they do two things, maybe three. Mm -hmm. uh, and you basically get your choice between the two, but they are fantastic. So you should all go and eat in France. And, and in a lot of ways, it is kind of fairy tale ish True. Uh, the other thing that I think the French do really well with their food is that it's all seasonal. So they really mm. like sticking with whatever's in season. It's not like they try to poach other things from other places. Uh, and often all of it's grown in France. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Very nice. And, and not only that, there's other things. Uh, we discovered when we bought the chateau that there were lovely roses uh, on the grounds. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love the smell of a rose? These are just a couple that are blooming out here in February in our little backyard in Oregon. Yeah. And when we first heard about the Griffery, I started Googling and trying to find out history of it and whatnot. And can you imagine, um, there is a rose named after the house. It's called the De La Griffery Rose. Okay, so the story apparently starts uh, with Napoleon and Josephine. Mm -hmm. uh, after their very sad divorce, Josephine started diversifying her interests and started getting into things surrounded herself with a lot of folks uh, that were terrific with flowers and botany. And, and so a couple guys started this, you know, discovering flowers left and right and crossbreeding and all of this kind of stuff. Um, years later, after Napoleon and Josephine were both gone, um, this one guy comes along and, and his name was Leslie? Jean-Pierre Vibert. Now Vibert uh, was an ex-soldier in Napoleon's army, wounded in Italy, uh, and he was prosperous as a hardware shop owner. And so he indulged his interest in roses and went around, bought a bunch of stuff and went and found roses. Apparently this guy was right on our own. I was going to say yard, but then people get mad at me again. The grounds or the garden or whatever you guys call it. No, I'm sorry. We're Canadians. Come on. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah, we'll have to talk about it. Yeah, that's just how it is. But anyway. Uh, so he's walking around. He sees this rose and he names it De La Griffery. You can Google it. And we actually have a bunch of them on the property. And they are beautiful. Yeah, and so they're super hardy. Right now they're, they were blooming in December. I'm sure they're still blooming. Um, and oftentimes they're used as rootstock now for probably a lot of our roses in Canada, honestly, because they're so hardy, but they're actually very beautiful. And I found something else that was kind of cute. So the Le Griffere means? Oh, claw. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we had noticed that someone, when they were describing the rose online, they said, um, be careful when mm -hmm. you walk by a rose because the cat-like claw yeah. of the thorns uh, will snag you on the way by, um, which I thought was super cool. <laughs> also interesting is the fact that he found this rose before our chateau was built. So yeah. presumably something, another chateau or another uh, uh, structure with that name already existed on the site. So we have these gray roses and, uh, and the other day we were looking through one of the rooms and we found a bunch of pamphlets from when the chateau was a hotel owned by some uh, English folks. And they left a whole bunch of pamphlets and we saw this. Apparently our yard had a rose garden. I know, I'm super excited. A little bummed that they're not all there, but if you can tell, all the little metal structures around the semicircle um, all still exist. And there are a few roses that are still blooming, well, alive. We'll yeah, 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 and 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 the trees, of course, and uh, the statue and the two urns. Mm -hmm. um, we thought it was just a big field of grass, but then when the fall happened this year, we were looking from the chateau down, and we noticed that you could see the outline yeah. of the paths. Yeah, especially when it snowed or kind of got frosty, you could kind of see the outline of them, and that uh, made me even more excited. Um, it, I can't wait to go dig that up. Yeah, so <laughs> Leslie's awesome. excited. One of these days, it's going to be a fantastic project, <laughs> and you're actually kind of a bit bummed that it got. Let oh, can you imagine room. if that was still yeah. there? How great would that be? Yeah. So we need to fix that up, but um, <laughs> you know, one day we will again have a rose garden, a uh, beautiful Yay. rose garden. Uh, and, and so that's that very exciting. Oh, see, yeah. Yeah, you there can it is. see that. that then later, we were just finding things online, and we found this other old postcard that I think was before maybe the... 60s, 1965, I think it said. And the garden was there then. So yeah. I don't know who did it, but doesn't that look fantastic? Oh my goodness. I just the trees. love this oh. postcard. Um, and I love the, the just how clean all the sand is and the gravel and nice big square. We will, one day we'll get back to that. I hope so. So in a lot of ways, uh, this thing feels like a fairy tale, but it's not all a bed of roses. Um, <laughs> and the sun doesn't always shine. Uh, there are days that are cold and dark. And there are some issues with the chateau that when you get close, you see. Now take a look right here. Um, I'm gonna put that old postcard back up. Take a look closely and look at the front facade of the chateau. Yeah, you got it. Okay, now take a look at this new modern uh, picture and tell me if you can see anything different. You see anything missing as you get closer? Okay, now back to the old one. All right, all right, and back to the new one. Yeah, we're missing the chimneys. Uh, the chimney on the right fell down years ago, and then uh, following that, um, the owner took down the left one to make it symmetrical. Every time I look at these chimneys, I get nervous, uh, to be honest, because we're fighting a battle against gravity, against the elements. This is a big chateau, and there's a lot of weight. But not only the chimneys have fallen, take a look closely at this next picture, and you see those great pediments, uh, or, or something on top of the pediments? What do we call them? Well, yeah, they're the, they're the triangle pediment part over yeah. top of the arched details that are over each of the, the windows, the dormer windows. And you'll notice on the new picture, um, four of the five of them are missing. And then we go back to this guy, see? So it's a little more bejeweled back in the past, but gravity is kind of fighting a war against us. Again, when we first went to buy the chateau, we did notice that there were a few things that were in trouble. This was probably the first thing walking up that front terrace. Mm -hmm. um, you look over to the right and you can see that something's happened. Yeah, we don't know what, it was before us, uh, but nothing good. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the front has fallen off. This is now, of course, that room is the room that they turned into a, a walk-in cooler and mm -hmm. they bricked up the windows. But even as you come around and see the inside of the rail, you notice they've got that uh, braced as well. So that, that definitely makes a person nervous. Uh, it's not just along the top. It's not just along the terraces. Even on the side of the building, uh, you will notice that there are pieces of tufo that have just fallen, fallen off. Um, our owner warned me not to walk on those ledges because... Uh, they're not too strong. I find this one interesting too. You can see in certain spots, like to the right here, center right, you can see that they've tried to almost cap uh, some of the stones and refinish them. Okay, now are you ready? Okay, if you're an engineer, um, if you're an engineer or a person who is easily frightened, maybe don't watch this. Um, I love I this like spot. At this. <laughs> this is underneath the back terrace, um, and you can see here that they've done some work on the arches there. They've put some new concrete last couple decades, probably. Mm -hmm. And then we move to the center and we see the original steel beams. And if you look closely, okay, you don't actually have to look closely at all. No, you can just look and there is some uh, missing steel there. Mm -hmm. A little bit of rust going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and you start to get nervous about some of the structural integrity of the terrace. Uh, and this is the one next to it. Yep, yep. 
We know what's right above that spot. Yeah, that's that's it's the back terrace and the front know, terrace actually as well. Right like here. at the top. Is that the top like uh, where the bench is? Oh, in yeah, the middle. Yeah, in the middle. Oh. Also, it's really interesting. You'll be walking around some of these under spots, and and you'll just notice a pile of rock or a pile <laughs> of rust, and you're going, where did where did that come from? Here you'll notice. Look at the wall. Um, it's not a bearing wall, so that's good, but. Anytime Still. you see a Goodness. cement wall being held up by a two by four, you're a little bit nervous. <laughs> That's not great. This is fascinating. I think this is great. Um, when they first built the building, uh, they had excellent beams and, and steel steel beams as well. But then they put branches in between. Wow, well, twigs. Twigs sometimes. Yeah. You can see them. The gray ones are the twigs. It's yeah. incredible. And then they put a little bit of either mortar or whatever that was on top of that and then the hardwood. Oh. Here you can see that they've braced those beams, so that's good news. I think this one's new. There's trouble on the back. Um, there's also some trouble on the front. You see the front terrace is huge. Um, you've got those big 13 steps, and they're supported by two nice columns. Um, but here, if you take a look, you'll notice, first of all, that they have skylights in the terrace. Big, huge, thick pieces of glass. But then they've also got these poles uh, standing up uh, just to give a little extra support. Again, those columns on the left look pretty strong for the stairs, but uh, you're not quite uh, as feeling as good about the, you know, the main area of the terrace. Mm, that's going to be a whole project. And this is the basement. This is what I'm talking about. You walk in and you see all this rust, and then you look up and you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> that's This is directly under the front terrace, in front of the front door. So that whole space, I mean, it, the good news is it's just the terrace, not the house that's going to fall down. But Still. Yeah, again... <laughs> Looks like they've put bricks in between some of those. So we need to get on that. We need to figure out how to get some extra beams in there and hold it up. And, and for the most part, that's my biggest worry. You know, people say, are you worried about crime? Nope, not really worried about crime. Maybe. I mean, there's not, what are you going to steal our toilets? You're going to take the paint off our walls? <laughs> but I am worried about gravity. And then you'll notice also, um, one day before we left, it's cold. Literally, uh, the day before. The day we before we left, I walk into the basement, big puddle, and you're like, uh-oh, that's not a good thing. And sure enough, we got some pipe that has frozen and broken. And so we got to, when we get back, we got to track that down. Um, so it's not all a bed of roses. Um, again, it's wonderful having a chateau. Uh, somebody was mentioning on the comments that a lot of a lot of people that do these videos spend a lot of time complaining about the cost and the work. And I was kind of like, yeah, because it's hard, it's super hard. Um, but it is also magical. Uh, and so we're hoping to get back. We're hoping this pandemic will end. Uh, unfortunately, France shut its borders. We have tickets to fly in a couple of weeks, and we're like, please, please let us get back. We want to get back to make it work. But, um, you know, we'll take what God gives us. And if you pray, we, we'd appreciate your prayers to get back <laughs> and uh, or your well wishes if you don't pray. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks for watching our videos, um, and uh, have, a good, have a good day. Smell the roses. Yeah. <laughs> I talked a lot.